So today we're going to take a look at Crescent's most unique offering in their lineup, the Crescent CK2 Venture. What you might recognize is a reconfiguration of the popular crew, which is a two-person kayak. This one has been converted into a fishing platform, and we're going to go over my fully rigged tournament setup. I'm going to talk about some of the things I love about this kayak, some of the things that I wish were a little bit different, um, and just kind of give you a walkthrough of my fully rigged double motor kayak rig. So I've had this kayak for most of the spring. I have fished two tournaments out of it. Um, I've used it with both this motor and the NK300. This is the XI3. I never really fished both at the same time. A lot of tournaments don't actually allow double motors. Our local trail, Moyak, does allow double motors. However, I've never actually done that, but it is configured to run both motors at any given time. So if you actually wanted to, you could run an XI3 and then have the you know, NK series, a Torquedo, whatever you want on the back, and it would work perfectly fine. Because one thing I will point out before we get too deep in this is this is a big kayak. This is over 13 foot long kayak. This is a high capacity kayak as well. So it is designed to have two people in it and like taking a lot of stuff if you're doing like a long overnight float trip, camping, etc. This hatch right here is perfect to put like gear in double tank wall in the back, which we'll get to as we make our way down there, is really good at kind of being that like big capacity kayaks. And we'll go over some of the stuff that they've added to it that will make a lot of anglers happy. And it made me happy. I love it, but there are some tricks to kind of get the most out of this kayak. Let's start in the front here. Um, we've already talked about this. This is the XI3. Um, this is on the one objective mount. The one objective mount is almost needed if you want to put an XI3 on the front of this. It is, in my opinion, a affordable mount for what it is. It makes it so that at any given point, you can pop this out right here, the quick release, and you can just pop your motor right off. So if you were wanting to just take your motor off, you know, I don't ever travel with my motor on, this bracket makes it so that the quick release puck it's super simple. Can't, can't argue that that right there is a huge, huge quality of life increase by just spending the money. I think, I, I think it runs like $120 for this bracket and it fits perfectly where the handle is. And it also gives you this handle right here in the back. Let's talk a bit about the wiring on this sucker because this is gonna be where everyone is like, oh, what's going on with that? So we're gonna drop this down and I'll actually show you how this works while we're at it. So let's talk about how we've got this configured from a release standpoint. Now you're going to need two different pull cords if you want to be able to lean forward and deploy your XI3. First being this right here, which is attached to this. So ultimately, if you design something like that, you know, you can just kind of drill a hole right there and put one of these quick pull carabiners on there. It attaches to that. And I'm not gonna attach it for this video, but essentially this depresses the foot right here and allows you to pull the main, the main string here. You depress that foot, pull this string, the motor deploys. Foot down like that, pull this string, the motor ever so gently falls down. Plot twist, it's not gently. Deploys like that, you're good to go. Now the question is, how do you bring it back up? The same way, you pull this string right here, it pushes the lever. When you pull this, it brings the motor back up. You can stow it away. I typically like to go with it halfway deployed um, when I'm launching, so I'll deploy it halfway, launch it out, hop into the kayak, pull it down the rest of the way when you get in deep enough water, and off we go. So let's talk about powering your motor and kind of just the hatch area on the CK2. So you guys might notice the CK2 doesn't have your traditional hatch. It has this splash guard, canvas. Um, this is basically if you want to stuff a bunch of stuff in the front, like on a camping trip or whatever, you've got this canvas to hold it all down. This is kind of water resistant, not really, but like it does repel water when you take them over the bow. It's a really good big water kayak. That's why I picked it up. But let's take a look under the hood and I'll kind of explain the wiring and just kind of how this is configured in general. So you can see just up close here, this is this is the way I've got it configured. This is actually from Sea Eagle. This is a Sea Eagle gear pod that I've got bungeed down in the front because um, I basically use this like I would have a traditional hatch on a kayak. But the CK2 does come, and this is important, 
stock with this pre-made tiny hatch in the front where you could put gear in there. And I don't, when I say gear, it's not much. But this is important because it does give you access to the hole from the front, which the crew version of this kayak did not have. So this is gonna be great. I haven't done it yet, but my, my plan is to put like this 10 amp hour lithium in there to power nav lights, which I'm gonna put here and here on the other side. I'm also going to put them over here and here for interior lighting because these kayak tournaments like the light to launch really early. But let, let's talk about the configuration here and then we'll keep going. So let's talk about the configuration I have with the wiring. This is my XI3 plug right here. Um, I just tuck it in right here into this and just keep it nice and organized. But you can see here, we've actually got through hole wiring for the XI3. So you can just quick release it there. Now, here's why we've done that. So if you're running graphs and stuff, so I have this big 100 amp hour graph battery that powers both the live scope box and my graph, you can get three days out of this easy. You can put your battery in the front for the XI3 and plug it directly in right here. That's totally doable if you want more weight in the front. But since I've got this up here, this up here, and the motor on front, what I like to do is actually plug it in here, and this is kind of a spoiler because we're gonna skip to the back, but it allows you the chance back here to plug it in here. So you could put your battery here, plug it in, and you're good to go. But since we've got the new port rigged up for the, the purpose of this video, we don't have that battery in here. However, you could run them side by side and still, you know, you're still capable. You put your 100 amp hour here. Um, you know, this is my 36 volt 100 amp hour 12 here. You could run this like that, have the 100 amp hour plugged in like that, and you could run dual motors. This probably looks a little chaotic, but it's actually quite deliberate. Um, since I'm not using this right here, we usually just tuck that away and then we run our 100 amp hour mini right here and we plug in our power right here. So anytime we're on the water, we can just plug all this stuff in and you can pop this off. I typically travel with the Garmin not on, but if I'm in a tournament and I wanna leave it mostly configured, I just take it off. So, I mean, there's several options you can do for that, um, but you know, I typically leave the bracket on with these on there. That way, if someone decides to steal it, I've got that. But you know, this is all configured like that. I always bring an extra little battery pack right here for your phone with a charger just in case. But the great thing about this gear pod is it, it bungees down like this, so it can't slide around. But this is water resistant. It may not look like it, but it actually is pretty good at, at blocking water. You just Velcro it down like this with your cables coming out the corners. This tends to stay pretty tight. Um, you know, you got your live scope cable here going over to there. But it allows you to have all this stuff on this, like this. And then I just like to pull the canvas hatch back like that, like so. And then I just cinch it down. It keeps everything tight. Everything is nice and tucked away. You've actually got these on the front where you can put gear. I like to put pliers in there. Um, anything that you might want, like if you want quick access to your scale, your scale fits perfectly right there. And they just push in like that. And it, this is mostly just cosmetic, but I mean, this works great. I'm really happy with this setup. So now that we've talked kind of about the front end of the boat, you know, we talked about the XI3, the battery, let's talk about how I've configured the cockpit here a little bit. A cockpit on this kayak is very streamlined. I didn't want a lot going on. I wanted everything up near the front. I wanted this section to be my domain where I can pull out my port measure fish as I see fit, just like that. Um, this is the perfect spot for a catch board on this kayak, by the way. Slides right in like that. I wanted this nice and, you know, that open cockpit feel. That's why I was drawn to this kayak. So we've got the boondocks bar here in the front. This boondocks bar is, they technically call it the groovy console. It's got a console groove on the front. It's got a measuring board on the front if you want to check your fish just to see if it meets the minimum requirements but I keep one graph on the front. Typically I'll put like a paddle holder here with my live scope kind of just looped around that. The reason why I have it looped like this is I typically don't want a ton coming out. This is still a work in progress on the live scope unit. So have it looped around there. The live scope just goes here in the turret. You've got plenty of room to do your live scope unit. Um, big fan of this bar. Now one of the big additions I've made to this kayak is we've actually put in two metal mighty mounts here in front of the main tracks, which these were all added in the fishing version of this kayak. The CK2, like I said, is an upgraded version of the crew. That's why there's all these indentations here. So 
you can actually get a second or third seat in here if you wanted to, you know, do a tandem scenario. But essentially, this is just like, you know, an oversized fishing kayak. You got plenty of room, but we've added these in the front. This, having this here gives us a more forward angle on it because if we had it here, with me being a taller person, I don't think that that would, would play well with the pedal steering. So it's nice to have this nice and in the front, your graphs there. It's super easy for me to lean forward and change settings on my graph at any given time. So it's really not a struggle for me. Um, I could see some shorter people not necessarily liking their graph this far forward, but um, for me it works. So I have no issues with it. So that's kind of the graph configuration with the Boondocks Groovy console. And I'm a fan of it. This was a, this was a game changer for me because it gives me that ability to have this stuff up and out of the way and keep this nice and clean. Now moving along here, we're looking at the Newport throttle paddle mount and just kind of the cockpit. Like I said, I've got my pedal steering. I want this thing clear of anything. I don't want to be fighting to have room to do my pedal steering. So typically, if you're ever watching me, this area right here is super clean. Now, when it comes to the throttle mount, this kayak right here was designed. It works really well with the XI3. This is a great kayak for the XI3 because it has a very pronounced keel. So you may notice on a lot of kayaks, like, um, you know, for instance, even the Sholey over there, the Sholey doesn't track super great with the XI3 because it's got a flat bottom, whereas this Crescent CK2 Venture does have a very pronounced keel. That's just kind of how these kayaks are designed. If you've ever been in the CK1, it's got the same kind of thing. Um, it makes it a great kayak for the XI3. However, I think when this, when you really ask me what is this kayak good at, this kayak is good at being fast. This is one of the fastest kayaks on the market. Now when it comes to this kayak, what is this kayak best at? Which motor does it perform best with? I'm gonna go with the NK300, the Torquedo 1103, uh, the NK180, or its counterpart, the Torquedo 403. I think they call that the ultralight. This is designed, in my eyes, to perform best with the back mounted motor, you know, the stern mounted motor. It does totally great with the bow mount. It's got that pronounced keel. But if you really want to unlock the full potential of this kayak, you're gonna want that stern mounted motor. Um, I've got the 300 on here. This is the NK300. I've mounted the throttle here right next to me. Um, I am toying with the idea of mounting it right here too. That's something that I'm considering, but as of now, um, you know, we've got kayak cushion, got my throttle right here. This is just the way I like it. I feel like it's really responsive to just be able to reach over and grab it. It's still far enough back that you're not use, losing the space here in the cockpit. For me, this is what works. So throttle mount here, um, that's all on the Yak Attack. And I'll link all this stuff in the description. Um, if you do decide to buy into this, I do appreciate it if you use my links because it does help me out but that's the Yak Attack throttle mount right there and we're just wiring it to the back. So that's the cockpit. That's, you know, my briefing on the motor. So if you made it this far, we're at the back of the kayak. This is where the meat is. This is where you see a lot of the modifications to kayaks. This is where you see most people storing a lot of their stuff. With this being the dual tank well style kayak, you've got a lot of room to do a lot of cool stuff. So here's how I've got this configured. This tank wall back here is a little bit smaller. This can fit a 13 by 13 black pack. It can fit a milk crate. It can fit the 13 by 16 if you turn it sideways. Um, it comes default in this Crescent CK2 with bungees like that. You can strap down your batteries, strap down your crates. I'm a big fan of what they've done on the tie down options on this kayak because you do have these bungee crevices here. You also have got the ability to do the cam locks, which it comes with two sets of cam, small cam locks if you want to cam lock your black pack bent down. Um, I keep my main black pack here. I keep my black pack here with all my gear. I like to run this bigger one if I'm doing a lot, but I will sometimes, if you're ever watching me, I have a 13 by 13 that I run on the river. I will sometimes throw this in here if I'm really dialed in. So when I fish Gunnersville, I actually downsize quite a bit. Ran this battery in the back with the 13 by 13 here. Took like four to five rods with me and that was it. I fished a whole tournament like that. But if I don't know what's going on, I want to take a lot of rods. This kayak's great at that because the capacity on it is like 700 pounds. 
motors. You can get a lot of gear in here. If you want to run that double motor, you want to run this big 12 volt, 100 amp hour, plus this new port battery to power your new port, have an XI3 on front, you absolutely can do it. So plenty of room for gear. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we do have the plug-in straps here, so you can just get your big battery like that. You can plug it in like that, and this will go all the way to the front and power your XI3 if you wanna power it from the front, if you want that battery in the front. But since I have a lot of stuff up there already, I kinda like to balance it out a bit. And typically, like I said, I'm not running both motors at the same time. So if I'm only running the XI3, this big Golden Mate Orion right here is what I like to use. Now, this is a fairly new battery that I've picked up. Um, I know the battery market is quite competitive, but one cool thing about this is it does have a built-in LED that'll tell you exactly how much power is in it. Um, this is the Orion 1000, which I will link in the description. You can pick this up on sale. It's actually quite affordable right now. I think it's on sale for like 20% off. So I'll link that in the description along with everything else. Um, but this will power your XI3 for, you could probably get 25 to 30 miles an hour or uh, range out of this, depending on like how fast you're going, where you're going. Um, at Possum Kingdom, I used this for close to 20 miles and I still had quite a bit um, left in the percentage. Really good battery for the price. It is a little bit on the heavy side, but it comes with this built-in case. So if you ever need to move it around, this battery is um, an attractive option for that. So that's this um, for, far as the new port, because I'm sure this is where we're gonna get the most questions. This is my favorite configuration of the CK2 Venture, is the Newport Vessels. This right here is the, this is a 36 volt battery, a 40 amp hour 36 volt battery. Um, you can also find this down in the description. You can literally get two days out of this if you're smart about the way you power. And you know, you, if you're smart about how much you use your motor. Um, there are diminishing returns with any certain mounted motor. You're going to be looking at close to, you're gonna be looking at using this from 50% up to 75% maximum throttle if you wanna really maximize it. Once you get over that 75%, you will gain a little bit of speed. However, you're going to really eat through that battery. But if you wanna do that first thing early morning run, not many people are going to be faster than you than an NK300 on the CK2. Um, I get upwards of 6.5 to almost seven miles an hour, depending on the conditions. I have pushed it to over seven going down river when I was on the Tennessee River fishing Gunnersville. Going down river, I was getting close to eight when they were generating current. So this is a very, very fast kayak. It is one of the fastest on the market. And that is due to the way the hull is designed. It is a long kayak. It is a slender front and a slender reel with a very pronounced keel. So it tracks really well. The foot steering, which we've got right here, which I'll give you guys a more in-depth look on that in just a sec. So stay tuned. I know a lot of people have questions about that is a very fast kayak, it tracks really well. You're going to get to the spot faster than anyone. That's the beauty of this kayak. As far as the foot steering, this is the part where a lot of people are going to have a challenge. And I'm gonna walk you guys through it just so you kind of get the idea of how I did it. So when we drill these poles to go to the front, this right here is my, um, this, this runs to the front. We left that open because we wanted access to these frog eyes. And you can see we've also drilled some through hole there. That is my transducer, which in case you're curious, I do run a switchblade for the transducer. So when I'm using it, it is stowed away right here perfectly, right? And when I'm not, it's down like this. And it's loose right now because I've loosened it on purpose for this video, um, just because I didn't want it like flopping all around. But typically this is very taut. It's a lot tighter and it just sits in the water. You get really good returns with this. This will not fit in the scupper. So you do have to use a side deploying transducer arm if you wanna have side imaging and down imaging like you would on like the Sholey because the, the, those transducers are just too wide to fit underneath. So when it comes to the foot steering though, you need access to this because you wanna drill these frog eyes and you have to take them all the way up here to come out right here and right here. So the tricky part is, is you're gonna to wanna to drill here first and you're gonna to wanna to thread it all the way back to here. And you're gonna to wanna to get a hold of your, you wanna get a hold of your, your tubing. So you're gonna run it through here, you get a hold of your tubing, and you're gonna poke it out that frog eye like that. Then you can run the, the wiring through it once you do. That's the hard part. Now in the old crew, you didn't have access to the front, 
like you do on this, which makes the whole wiring process a lot easier because you have access to the hatch. Um, so th that, that is the tricky part, is getting the tubing run through this. But if you poke it through here and you run it to the back and then you fish it out of these holes, you can ultimately get these in there like this, get them nice and mushroomed, and you'll have flawless pedal steering. This works like a charm. I love it. Um, it did really well at Gunnersville, so I'm really happy with the way this is all configured as far as a slip steering setup. Now let's talk about some of the cons of having a rear-mounted motor. Because this is a very long kayak, this does not turn on a dime. You're turning thir over 13 feet of kayak, it is not going to do those really quick pivots like you would see in like a shoulder. It's just not going to do it. So when you get it out there and you get your foot steering, you're probably going to have to tweak it a few times to get it to where you like it. Um, I have mine as about as responsive as you can get it. Some people like a tighter turn. I like a more loosey-goosey style turning. That's just me. And you can see here, um, I don't actually have the Newport mounted in there. I just didn't want to deal with it. But I've got the Innovative Sportsman Rock Guard on this. If you do pick up this motor or you know, even a Torquedo on the back, highly recommend a Rock Guard. Not only is it going to protect your motor and your investment, the weed trimmer, the weed cutter, whatever you want to call it, you've got on these is just so useful. It is a lifesaver at Gunnersville, but you're also gonna gain a little bit of speed because these, these rock guards give you a little bit less cavitation, I think is the way it's been described to me. Uh, I'm not an expert on the physics behind it, but it is gonna keep your motor down. You're gonna suck less air as you're going and it's gonna be way more streamlined. You gain a little bit of speed with this. So um, I was going maybe 6.4 and I go 6.5 base with this. Like I said, I can get higher depending on how you trim your motor and conditions, but highly recommend the rock guard if you're gonna go with anything like this. So that's me in a nutshell walking you through my fully tournament rigged CK2 Venture. Let's talk about the kayak itself. Now, some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. Um, let's start with the pros of this kayak. It's fast. I've already mentioned you get close to seven miles an hour in this kayak. If you rig this with any sort of 36 volt or 1103 style stern mounted motor, you're gonna be the fastest kayak around. Not many people have kayaks this long, let alone the power you get from these bigger motors. So it is a super fast kayak. It handles really well too. It is designed really well for motors, front or back. I would say that if you're wanting a kayak that can do pretty much everything, this is a really good kayak for that because if you even wanted to strip it down, take the family out with two seats in it and go down a river and maybe cast a couple times as you're going with the family, jump in and swim, this is an awesome kayak for that. Honestly, I'm really excited to do some overnight floats, loading this down with a tent in the back, sleeping bags and hammock in the front because I do have the Boondocks Drifter hammock which will fit perfectly in either tank well because you do have tons of storage. So. The open platform element of this is something that I really love about it. You can make this however you want. There's a lot of like small changes that they've made to it just to make it a little bit more fishing friendly. Um, Cause if you're familiar with the crew platform, there was no front hatch. Um, the tank wells were the same, but a little different in the sense that you've got some more conveniences that you expect in a fishing kayak, such as tie downs, stuff like that. The pad kit comes base in this. The cover comes base with this, so you're getting the pad kit, the cover, all the Yak Attack pieces on here, the rails, everything good to go out of the package. You don't have to add those. Now, you could just buy a crew, add the pad kit, add the cover, add all these things. And if you have a crew, that is honestly something that you could definitely do if you wanted to upgrade it. Now, I will say I have upgraded a few things on it that come base. Obviously, I put the one objective front mount for the bow mount and trolling motor. Um, I have actually changed out the pedals on this to the angled pedals from Innovative Sportsman. So the pedals aren't moving on the rails, it's rails moving on rails. If you wanna adjust the actual pedals, you do have that option to move them down without adjusting the whole thing. So that is one thing I've changed. Obviously I've got a kayak cushion on there. Shout out to them, I love this thing. You know, I was kind of skeptical at first on kayak cushion because it is a premium expensive piece, but um, I met the guy at Chili Palooza, super nice dude, um, works hard. This thing is over a year old. I think I've had it for, I wanna say a season and a half and it still looks brand new and I fish a lot. So those are some things I really like about it. Now, as far as catch board, you can pretty much measure it like you would in any kayak, but you are going to have to angle it. 
So if you're coming from a kayak like the Sholi or even like a Hobie where you can just fit this straight down in there like that, you can't do this on this because the gunnels on this are extra wide. But there's a lot of pros of that. I had no problem measuring fish at Gunnersville, just leaning it in like that. Um, so if you are getting this for a fishing kayak, the measuring aspect is just pretty much standard. Like I didn't have any issues with it. Um, one thing I do like too, I mentioned the high gunnels are actually a benefit because you take on a lot less water. With the nose being very pointed, that was something that I was highly concerned with, taking a lot of water over the front, especially because I don't have a traditional hatch. I've got the cover and then that um, sea eagle hatch that holds my electronics. But truthfully, guys, after fishing Possum Kingdom in 35 mile an hour gusts and going through some pretty brutal chop, um, yes, I did take on some water. Most of my stuff stayed dry with the way I have it configured. Now let's talk about some of the cons. With the way the double tank well is, it means that this first tank well is kind of in your back here. So if you plan on having rods on every side of your crate, you're not really gonna be able to do that because I've actually got a rod holder on the front here and it, it comes close. When you're sitting in here fully, you don't have a lot of space. So you can definitely get rods in there. It's gonna be cramped. So you can see there too though, you can get a yak attack short stack. If you wanted to just have one of those like right here, this fits in here, no problem. As you can see here, the Yak Attack short stack. You could actually mount this on the front and have access to that, no problem. But I think it is a little cramped to have rod tubes on the front. So if that was something that you do where you have rod tubes on every side of it, not, not gonna work. Now I will say I do like the double storage. One thing I have done in the past is I've put the 13 by 13 in the back and the 13 by, or the 16 by 16 in the front and then you have plenty of room for activities. You can get a lot of gear in there. So that is a pro of this, but like I said, some configurations might find this a little narrow because with all this weight shifted back, sometimes people, when I first sat down and I felt a little cramped because I had so much stuff, room up front and then all my gear was like back here and it just felt a little unbalanced. So that is one thing to consider based on what you're doing is just you know, make sure the measurements work for you. Now I do like that they added these Jack Attack mounts right here. These come default. Um, that is a nice quality of life change. I mount my camera right there and it just goes over my shoulder. And then I have my battery box either coming out of this or just sitting right here. No, no preference on that. It just depends on what I'm doing for the day. So um, I do like that they included this mount too. Um, this comes base, the Crescent motor mount. So you can just put your thing right on there like that. Put your bracket on there like that, no drilling required. So that is a nice quality of life change as well. So in summary, if you want a kayak that can hold a lot of gear, tracks really well, is a super fast kayak, this might be the one for you. But if you're intimidated by the over 13 foot design of this kayak, there are some other options in Crescent's lineup that could actually be one that you would want to look into, such as the CK1, the Shoei, or even the Light Tackle are all really good options that are fishing capable rigs that are a little bit smaller. But if you want a tournament ready kayak that you can throw whatever you want on it, make it however you want, go super fast, put either motors on it, run dual motors, this is the rig for you because you can take so much gear with you at any given time. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep an eye out for more walkthroughs on it. I'm gonna do a breakdown on the motors in a little bit more in depth in the future, especially when you're going from the 180 to the, one, to the 300, because there is a big jump there. And I do get a lot of questions from you guys on 300 versus 180, which one's, which one's right for me. And we'll talk about that in a future video, but um, I think this works really well at the 300 personally. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll catch you next time. Feel free to check any of the links down in the description. I've got all the parts and gear and everything in this kayak in the description. So if you have any questions, click on those links. It helps me out when you buy from them, um, but I'll see you guys in the next time.